Hello again, it's uh, Mrs Ellis here and we're going to be looking at the poem Nostalgia from your poetry anthology for your English literature exam. Let's start with what the poem is about. This poem is about sadness and longing, desiring things in your life which are no longer there. The poem amplifies Duffy's fixation with fleeting moments in the past, which she does a lot of in her poetry. And as they come to surface in the present, and that's what she does, she brings what's happened in the past, just like Mrs Lazarus, and just like the head of English, the other poems in your anthology. She's doing exactly the same here with the poem Nostalgia. The poem's actual content is ambiguous. It has references to early mercenaries returning home with a sack on the back. And this suggests a wartime theme, but a wartime theme of the soldiers' homecoming. But the lines about school teachers and the past perhaps attempt to expand that out onto the more wider idea of nostalgia and how it relates to the wider person and not where originally it came from. The idea of nostalgia, which is made up of Greek and Roman words originally, but the idea of nostalgia is quite an interesting fact. In 1688, the Swiss soldiers, or mercenaries, which is what they were, became the focus of medical study into the illness that the soldiers suffered and experienced while they were away from their families and their home in the mountains. Many of the soldiers suffered Severe sadness, depression, sickness, even anorexia. Then, in the 1732, a medical specialist even considered whether this sickness was caused by a combination of cowbells and altitude sickness. But eventually, they named the disease nostalgia. Now, we don't know it as a disease, we know it as an abstract, something we feel. Go. In the first stanza, we have reference to those mercenaries, those soldiers. Those early mercenaries, it made them ill, leaving the mountains, leaving the high, fine air. Here we have a repetition of the word leaving, emphasising the, the distress of them leaving leaving the high, fine air to go down, down. Here again we have repetition of the word down, but not only does it mean literally to descend from the mountain villages, but it also means metaphorically to be down, to be depressed, to be saddened, to feel low. What they got was money, dull, crude coins, clenched in the teeth, the money that they received wasn't any match for the extreme danger that they were to present themselves in. And also being away from home was another issue, another fear that they had because they had this sickness that they didn't understand what it was. Strange food. Emphasis on the word strange. Unusual. They've come down from the mountains. They've been sent off to conflict elsewhere as mercenaries and soldiers were, did in many years ago, and it was strange to them, it was new to them, it wasn't what they were used to. Again, we have the repetition of the word wrong, the wrong taste, stones in the belly and the wrong sounds, the wrong smells and the wrong light, every breath wrong. These mercenaries were affected from being away from their mountain air and the people that they love and their families and familiar surroundings. The repetition of wrong emphasises how unpleasant it was for them, how out of comfort zone they were. They were completely, completely at their wit's end. They had an ache here, doctor. They pined, wept, grown men. It was like it was killing them. The extent, the effects that it had on them. 
that these grown men, these soldiers, they were aching, pining and weeping. In fact, it wasn't just those effects that they were having, those physical effects. It was, as it states, killing them. They couldn't cope with being away from home, but they couldn't also identify what it was that was making them ill. In stanza two, we finally see that it was given a name. Notice the word it that was repeated in the first stanza. The name, of course, is nostalgia. Hearing tell of it, there were those who stayed put, fearful of the sweet pain. People actually stayed in the mountains. Once it was given a name, nostalgia, they stayed and because they feared it. They didn't want the sickness. They didn't want the sweet pain. Notice the contrast and the juxtaposition, even an oxymoron of those two words, sweet pain. Also notice the H's within this um, stanza. Hearing tell of it, there were those who stayed put, fearful of the sweet pain in the heart, of, the, of how it hurt in that heavier air, and to hear the music of home, the sad pipes summoning. Notice the letter H's. They almost give a sense of a, a sigh. Now that could be seen either as a sigh of depression, of sadness, or it could also be a sigh of relief that it had been given a name, that we could finally put a name to it. The sad pipes summoning when they would return home and they heard the pipe sound in their villages, even they sounded sad. Summoning in the dwindling light of the plains, a particular place where maybe you met a girl or searched for a yellow ball in the long grass, found it just as your mother called you in. Notice the emphasis on the details of their memories but it's those small little details that they remember that's personal to them. So it does ask the question is, what is it that they're missing? Familiarity or the past? Finally, let's look at stanza three. But the word was out. Some would never fall in love had they not heard of love. Here, Duffy is trying to say, but the word out now, that's good for some, but it's created a label. She's suggesting that if we had never heard of the word love, how would we know that we were in love? How would we know that feeling? Because both nostalgia and love are abstract, so they aren't tangible. It's something that can't be touched. If we didn't know the word before, how do we know that we're in it now? So the priest stood at the stile with his head in his hand, crying at the workings of the memory through the colour of leaves. And the school teacher opened a book to the scent of her youth too late. Here we have two figures, two figures who are quite professional in, this, in that sense, who are longing for a sense of the past, but they're crying for the past. The scent of her youth too late. It cannot be retrieved. Their past cannot be retrieved. It was spring, again the word spring, associates with new life and new beginnings. It was spring when one returned, referring to a soldier, with his life in a sack on his back. He's been away for so long, his whole life, his possessions are in the back of his rucksack. To find the same street with the same sign over the inn, the same bell, chiming the hour on the clock, and everything changed. Notice the repetition, same, same, same. All these things, he wanted to be the same or were the same, but actually everything had changed. Or do we have to think about whether it was the person that's changed who's been away for such a long time? And your past, you cannot retrieve, you only have memories of it, which is why the soldiers perhaps had the memory of meeting a girl or a ball in the grass, or the mother calling them in. 
It's us who change and our memories of all we have of the past. Okay, so let's have a look now at the nostalgia's structure and alternative meaning. The structure reinforces the content of the poem because although it's placed in three stanzas, there is no regular pattern. And this is quite important because the irregularity of the structure mirrors the irregularity of how these mercenaries would have felt, how they would have felt so nostalgic and out of sorts that they weren't able to carry on. Alternatively, we need to think about the reasons why nostalgia can be looked at in other ways. Stanza three maybe suggests that um, labelling the disease because the word was out could actually, um, was not in fact a, a positive move. In fact, it was a negative force because once you have been labelled with something, then it becomes an issue for others. The poet suggests that like love, nostalgia, if you didn't know the word love, you couldn't love. Therefore, if you didn't understand the word nostalgia, you couldn't suffer with it. And that caused problems for people who didn't want to be associated with the term nostalgia and the idea that they had a disease. 